Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple of years ago, a young African author spoke at a high school in South Carolina. Mr. Chairman, she was a beautiful, talented young woman, and when she lifted her arm to brush away the hair from her eyes, I saw something I have never seen before, at least not in this country, which was someone's hands who had been cut off with a machete. When she was 12 years old, living in Sierra Leone, rebel soldiers came to her village during the Civil War. She tried to run. She tried to hide. She asked God to let her die, but the soldiers found her. And they cut off her hands and mockingly told her to go to the president and ask for another pair. And that 12-year-old girl, Mr. Chairman, remembered thinking to herself, what's a president? Collectively, Mr. Chairman, we all understand why people want to come to this country, to escape persecution, to taste freedom and liberty, to know that hard work and education and a level playing field can combine forces to transform lives. Escaping conflict and hardship is one thing, Mr. Chairman. Picking a new home is another. And America is picked because we are a country that embraces justice. We reward fairness. We're a nation of laws. The poorest of the poor has the same standing in court as the richest of the rich. We believe in the even application of the law because law provides order, structure, predictability, and security. And what we cannot become is a nation where the law is enforced selectively or not at all. And what we cannot become, Mr. Chairman, is a country where the laws apply to some of the people some of the time. The President from time to time, Mr. Chairman, says that he wants a country where everyone plays by the same rules. With respect, they aren't called rules in this country. They're called laws. And each of us takes an oath to enforce them, including those with which we may disagree. Because when the law is ignored or applied in an uneven way, we begin to see the erosion of the very foundation upon which this republic was built. And make no mistake, Mr. Chairman, as surely as today one may benefit from the non-compliance or non-enforcement of a law, that same person will be clamoring to have the law enforced in another capacity. So we seek to harmonize two foundational precepts, Mr. Chairman. Number one is humanity. And number two is respect for the rule of law. And history is whispering, as you noted, Mr. Chairman, that we have traveled this road before. In 1986, we were told that immigration had been settled once and for all. We were told that in exchange for secure borders and employment verification, those who entered the country illegally would not suffer the full panoply of legal consequences. In the minds of many, Mr. Chairman, the country got amnesty, but is still waiting 25 years later on the border security and the employment verification. So here we are back again, asking our fellow citizens to trust us. And many, despite ourselves, Mr. Chairman, remain open to legislative expressions of humanity and grace. But they will be watching, skeptically, to see if we are serious about enforcing the rule of the law. Are we serious about ending the insidious practice of human trafficking? Are we serious about punishing those who prey on folks with false promises and fraudulent documents? Are we serious about border security and employment verification? Are we serious about making this the last, last time we have this conversation? Or are we simply playing political games with people's lives and undercutting the respect for the rule of law, which ironically is the very reason they seek to come to this country in the first place? We shall see. I yield back.